and it looks like it is race on. USA disqualified. I'm embarrassed. I've never sailed like that before. Emirates Team New Zealand is steaming ahead. It was definitely a very high stakes uh, day today. And they will win race number one in style. Yeah, we kind of tried to approach it quite aggressively, get off the line well, get out in the front. And we are a go for race number two. This is the umpires, USA restart penalty. A day like today, you just want to crawl away into a hole and hide and, and forget about it. Oh, and a bad jibe by American Magic there, coming off their foils. Zemmerich's Team New Zealand are going to go two from two on day one. Probably one of the hardest days I think I've ever had in sailing. American Magic, unfortunately, off the foils again. USA, you have not started in three minutes. Your score did not start. I've never had a day like that before. Winning that start, the Swiss young clear. Marco Gridoni uh, from Luna Rossa. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli in the number one position. If they win this race, it's his first win in the America's Cup arena. Win number one in the jet for Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. I'm happy because we did uh, a good race and we are able to do it. So let's keep like this. It's only the beginning. Welcome to Jeddah, Saudi Arabia for day two of the NEOM America's Cup preliminary regatta. This magnificent venue on the Red Sea is hosting a premier global sailing event for the first time. The Jetty Yacht Club, based in their facility that resembles the sail of a traditional Dow, have certainly made them all welcome and feel at home. The Saudis have a real desire to produce world-class sailors through their five-star sailing academy. Jeddah mixes the old and the new, the magnificent old city of Al Balad, and then in the blink of an eye, you're staring at a state-of-the-art Formula One race circuit. But today, all eyes are on the water as six nations are showcasing their high-tech AC40 foiling monohulls capable of outrunning the wind, which is exactly why fans have turned up to experience something they've never seen before. This is stadium racing. You can't get much closer to the on-water drama than this. And the fans here in Jeddah and around the world are loving it. Three races were completed yesterday and another three are on the cards today with two more tomorrow before the top two scoring teams race in a winner-takes-all match race. Scoring is straightforward. Ten for first, seven for second, five for third, then three, two, one. And how about the storylines on day number one? Emirates Team New Zealand, the defender of the 37th America's Cup, came out of the gate as if they'd been shot out by a rocket. Two wins by a minute and five, and one by a minute and 39 seconds. Wow! It was Tita and Gradoni's debut in the America's Cup ring, and with some style, they fearlessly took it on and delivered results. The young Italian team are in second, big smiles, and quite rightly, a team already celebrating. Ineos Britannia only just making it out to the start line after a mechanical issue with one of their foils. They'll be really looking forward to having a solid day here on the water in Jeddah today. Our champions from Villanova had a, Nova had a day that will be hard to forget. A disqualified, it did not start in the last place, left them searching for answers. Things be admitted to being embarrassed and they need a blinder of a day. So this is how the points table looks like. Emirates Team New Zealand sit atop of the pile. The yellow says you've won and you get the maximum 10 points. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli close behind them. Then it's a lingy Red Bull racing at Ineos Britannia. Watch that battle. The French hold fifth while a DQ at a no start and a last finish have the conquerors of Villanova at the bottom. Well, Stephen, I'm sure it was a long evening of head scratching for this team, the American team. They'll be relieved it's a new look day on the Red Sea. The priority for them, reset, keep it clean, and the point's high. Yeah, look, you definitely don't learn how 
you know, forget, or forget how to sail overnight. And these guys have had a huge amount of time practicing. So they'll be coming out with both barrels absolutely aimed at getting across the line in good shape today. Cracking day, the second day of racing. Stephen McIver, Shirley Robertson, Glenn Ashby, Peter Lester on the water. Smiles around. Why wouldn't you be if you're Luna Rossa, Prada, Pirelli or Emirates Team New Zealand the way they performed yesterday? They uh, reminded who can sail an 80 40 now it's up to everybody else to try and match them there is so much to look forward to and it is going to be a cracking day of racing on the red sea on the second official day as we fly over this magnificent jedi yacht club and marina uh, that has just welcomed everybody since we've been here for a week and a half or already and the fans are turning out for this one most importantly, this is all about sailing. Uh, the Jetty Yacht Club have an academy and they are pushing for not just young and old, but the whole population of Saudi Arabia to embrace sailing so they can then forge a path for the next Olympic sailors and the next America's Cup sailors. Amazing facility. Well, it's a familiar looking course by now. And up when start, then it's up to the gate, passing either of the turning marks before fully sending it downwind to the bottom gate. Six legs planned before a push for the finish and hopeful glory. Windwise is looking rather tasty. Jeddah delivering a mouthwatering 13 to 15 knots from the northwest. And a tease in the forecast for more to come. So we go live onto the course and let's go onto the water straight away because Peter, Lester, we have incredible conditions and how will it change the way these teams approach the start sequence? Well, I think start sequence wise, they'll certainly want to be online and clean off the line, but let's just look at the conditions. Looking up the track, it's beautiful, 14, 15 knots. Um, the talking point for me at the moment is the, the visibility isn't that great. Going upwind will be all right. This is the race committee. The course for race four is course six. Course six. Axis is 303. Length is 1.35 nautical miles. Good luck. Two minutes, 17 seconds to go. Let's talk about the wind. And uh, I see they're all J3s. Yeah, all teams uh, running the J3 today. That's a 23 square metre jib, basically 13 square metres less than the J1. This is absolutely what these boats are designed this for. This is these the umpires. Absolutely <laughs> Boundary fantastic. penalty France. Boundary penalty France. That's exactly what France do not want to hear with one minute 50 to go. They'll have to pay that penalty off after the start line, obviously going out of boundary there. So that's a big blow to the French team. We are in for a treat. <laughs> I think we're going to see much more conventional starting, but so crucial, isn't it, to get off that line so you've got options further up the leg. Yeah, France they didn't want that. They had two P5s yesterday, but they came home and, uh, and they, in fact, they just didn't have one of those days. So they just have to settle everything down. Yeah, no, look, we're, we're absolutely looking at some beautiful conditions here. We should see a lot tighter field coming off the start here in these conditions. The time on distance should be a little easier to achieve in these conditions. All boats fully foiling, going really nicely. Peter, I just want to quickly go back to you briefly. What are you seeing as this startup? The bulk of the fleet uh, have just gone round the back of Chase One, the camera boat. They're heading over uh, down into the bottom of the box. Uh, plenty of pressure. They won't have any um, getting up on the foil problems of this. It's about time on distance and positioning, and distance and positioning, and then off the line, finding a lane. Visibility is a bit compromised, or, uh, but it is clearing as this beautiful uh, you know, afternoon, 14, 15 knots uh, settles. Uh, this will be a ripper, but finding a lane and the ability to push hard off the line. Yeah, all teams will be set up for max D power coming off the start here, setting the rigs up cleanly as they accelerate towards the line. Really, really important to get the boat up to almost over target speeds before they hit the line. Inside the last 20 seconds of race number four and the second of Neon America's Cup preliminary regatta. Keep your eye on the clock at the line. Now it's 10 seconds to go. Who's got this right? Racing. Clear start, clear start. Race four is underway on the Red Sea and they are all flying. France, you have a penalty, a boundary penalty pre start. So France having to just duck back, 
lose some ground there, 75 metres back, as they were having to clear their penalty. Having a look at the rest of the fleet here, American Magic looking like they're getting off the line reasonably cleanly there. Emirates Team New Zealand tacking away there, going to be close to bow on bow with a Lingi Red Bull Racing just crossing there. They'll be looking to extend Grant, as they head to the right-hand uh, side. 30 metres to go. American Magic, Tom Slingsby, they owned that pin end and are firing up this beat, heading right to the right-hand side. Ben Ainsley of Ineos, he will come back with right of way. Going to be some really close crosses here as we get France penalty clear. towards the top end of the course here. Boats trucking along here upwind, absolutely boosting, fully depowered and sailing the boats with quite a wide cant angle, using absolutely max power and sailing the boats as cleanly as they possibly can through the air. Quite a bit of chop out there, Glenn. Yeah, look, really, really choppy conditions there, but the boats are absolutely ripping, so you can see how stable Good they are in their flight. Let's go on board they American Magic, because they are going a bit out of bow with Luna Rosa. Modes. Actually, you're doing good here, no slower. Take 30 is about your target. Okay, we're going to cross Team New Zealand. Okay, clear. Nice. We heard the voice there of Tom Slingsby on yeah. underneath, not helmet, just describing what was going on to his co helmet. That's good, 30 is good. Hey, they will have boundary, uh, boundary protection out here. We are close to laying one and in left, so. Now, all of this is my board down, just in case they do. We are starting to lose a little here now. To close the gauge a bit. Open course to go right. I think we push this. So it's all my, my board down call. Emirates Team New Zealand sailing along at around about 31 knots of boat speed there. Just sailing a little click quicker and freer than the other teams. They'll be setting up for attack here on the boundary. Still have another two manoeuvres to go. American Magic and Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli will be almost bow on bow, I think, with Emirates Team New Zealand as they get towards the middle of the course. So as we head up win for the first time in the first leg of six, it's now Emirates Team New Zealand the lead, marginally ahead of Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, American Magic, Alinghi Red Bull Racing, Ineos Britannia, and France in the river, not that far behind. Remembering, of course, they had to serve that boundary penalty. And American Magic here really putting the squeeze on Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli absolutely getting spat out the back there. They will be, they will be getting affected by the bad air. GBR just ducking behind Emirates Team New Zealand. Bow on bow with a Lingi there. A Lingi will have to duck below Ineos Britannia, which tack, putting them right in the dirt. But it's the Americans heading into the top mark in a solid position. How good is this? All six AC40s inside of our cameras and just going for it in strong winds. Who gets around the top mark first? Take your pick, but we'll say American Magic followed by Lua Rosa Prada Pirelli and then it's Emirates Team New Zealand. Enios and Alinghi Red Bull Racing just hammer and tongs on each other. This is what we've been waiting for. They are so close, and just look at the speed. Yeah, absolutely ripping downwind here. 41 knots of boat speed. These little boats are absolutely on the rev limiter at the moment, coming down here at the moment. On the downwind leg for the first time. Let's go on board, Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. Remember, they won race three. It was a big day yesterday. How big could today be? Take it down, nice. 50, 60 again, Truji. Just talking about the can Minus setting 60, there on the dagger foils. 50 to 60, that's the can angle of the America. foil arm there. I think we will not cross at the moment. Yeah, we are, we are crossing by the software. Sure. Coming down a click. No, I'm not sure, sure but I'm just keep on performance. Coming down a click. We are not crossing. Bow on bow crossing. here with okay. American Magic. This is a really, uh, really tight cross yeah, here. Oh, sorry, guys, we are crossing. Easy cross, easy cross. Yeah, yeah, easy cross, boys. American Magic on starboard. They Follow have all across. the rights. Nice. One in here, right, boys. Nice call, Marco. Yeah, keep focus. 
We can be slightly faster if we manage 40 times. I guess the best for sure. Yes, tranquil, one in your right, gonna be one in in. Luci, non prende la troppo stretta perché se ci fa più correct, non andare sul sinistro, assolutamente sì. Let's go onto the water, Peter Lester there. They're coming hammer and tongs down towards you. Who do you think has the obvious advantage? Oh, right now, now it's Luna Rossa, a lead change. And that came about because at the top mark, American Magic had a very big touchdown. And that cost them probably two or three lengths. And that opened up the opportunity for Luna Rossa to come to the right, come back with the Emirates Team New Zealand on their hip to just get that marginal cross. And uh, there was certainly a lot of on Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli about that crossing and it was beautifully executed. So it's Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli just under 40 knots on the Red Sea in race number four, approaching the mark for the first downward leg. How close is this? But look at American Magic steaming in. And turning up. So it's Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli around the bottom mark for the first time, but right on their heel is American Magic. Look out, flying into view, Emirates Team New Zealand, winner of two races yesterday. This is tight racing. It's so impressive, the young Italians. I, I asked some of their teammates about Marco Cardone, and he said he is just brave, and they are sending it today. They had great pace, Glenn. Look, if you've sailed a Macra 17 downwind in these conditions before, you, you, you have to be brave to, to sail fast, and that's exactly what these guys are doing at the moment. Ruggiero Tita, very familiar with pushing a boat hard for maximum performance, and that's exactly what Lunarossa Prada Pirelli are doing at the moment, absolutely holding the throttle wide open and enjoying the ride. How tough is the manoeuvring in these conditions? One of the hardest things in these conditions is actually dealing with the G-forces in the manoeuvre of the yacht. You're getting bounced around and shoved around, so while you are really feeling the boat through your backside, you need to hang on tight but control the boat accurately, and for the trimmers, trim very accurately as well. So they've got a nice, tidy lead on the second upward leg as Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. You've got American Magic, who had a horrible day yesterday, have come out, and they've come out with intent and purpose chasing Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli with Emirates Team New Zealand in P3. Alinghi Red Bull Racing, followed by Ineos Britannia, who fallen back just a little bit. And then, of course, it's Orient Express Racing. It's a busy course. You know, match racing is not like this, but there's not a lot of room. It's hard to get clean air, and it's hard to pick your own path. Beautiful tack there, Ineos, Britannia. They'll be looking at really pressing hard on the jib here. Those telltales on the jib dictating to the trimmers when they're fully pressed on the jib, and they'll be wanting to make sure that they are fully pressed on there to try and get back into this race sailing fast as we head across to the right-hand boundary. Great battle in second, third, and fourth. Quite a close dip here coming through. Emirates Team New Zealand just crossing in front of American Magic there. All boats sailing absolutely full speed, around 30 to 31 knots of boat speed. So Emirates Team New Zealand, who picked up two race wins and sit at the top of this regatta table with 22 points, now pick themselves back into second position. Let's go on board Emirates Team New Zealand. They're normally very calm, very cool. Yeah, if they're going to hit us, you can go before lay. Might knock if anything on the way back, guys. Is that a lingy on our hip, or is that...? Yeah. Okay, left-hand zone, eh? Three, two, one, we're down. Oh, four. Really, really clinical uh, sta stop stand attack there on board Emirates Team New Zealand. The top end of the course here coming up really quite quickly. The boat's getting around the track really well in this 13 and a half to 14 knots now of wind speed. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli also attacking. They'll probably take the right gate looking up to the top of the course. Emirates Team New Zealand will probably follow, uh, but Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli a really solid lead at the moment. They'll be very happy with that.
do not blink right now because we are halfway through race number four in the Neom America's Cup preliminary regatta and around go Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli in the lead of Emirates Team New Zealand. Look at the cross coming. No cross. High wheel. Really, really tight maneuver there, forcing American Magic away. Wouldn't be surprised if I see a protest. There it is. American Magic protesting Emirates Team New Zealand for tacking too close to them. Be really interesting to see what umpire Richard Slater has to say there about that. Well, umpire Richard Slater doesn't take too long to come up with a decision, so keep your ears out as we go on board the chase boat for Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli oh our express racing touching down Philippe Presti is watching this we won't take too much of your time Philippe but I can imagine you're sitting on the edge of your seat watching this crew fly this boat at pace yeah yesterday was a little bit stressful uh, because the, the light air today is uh, more the breeze that uh, worried us but uh, I think the guys did a great job out of the line and the sailing uh, at their best so Lovely to see. This is a real challenge though for all the fleet, isn't it? 40 target speed, Yeah, it's super challenging. The wind is up and down and quite, uh, you know, close to 16 at the moment. So, yeah, and, uh, another lap, as, uh, <laughs> as Mike said. <laughs> thanks for your time, Philippe. Philippe Priest, okay, coaching Luna you know, Rosa Prada Pirelli. Keep 40, keep 40. Now happy to have you down, I think. Uh, coming up, man. Coming up, no, they won't draw. Beating up the Nice. Some really nice boat speeds heading downwind here. All boats sitting around that sort of 39 to 41 knot mark. Really, really impressive how well they're all getting downwind. Almost. Looking at times like they're going straight downwind, but they're not. They have to sail downwind at angles, but they're very, very deep angles in these conditions. And two, one, board up. Coming down the On to the water, Peter Lester. What do you make of the way Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli are sailing today? It's going to be a two board on up. Well, right now they haven't made a mistake. They won the start, and uh, off that first time down at the bottom mark gate, they took the right option going round the right-hand mark, and they made a jump. Two boys, two then it's uh, an arm two. wrestle immediately boys, behind them, and that's helping Luna Rossa extend their lead between Emirates yeah, Team New Zealand and American eight. Magic. And it two. was very close at that top one. mark as they come into the bottom one. mark. New Zealand coming in uh, on starboard. Two, one, Magic coming in on port. They'll be very close together at mark three. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli round the, the bottom mark. The up on the penultimate leg. The last upwind leg. Look at this. American Magic Emirates Team New Zealand. And more coming out. Yeah. You got it, you got it. Yeah. Dog fight on the Red Sea. Emirates Team New Zealand, American Magic. And Ineos Britannia and Alinghi Red Bull Racing splitting the gate at the same time, just like American Magic and Emirates Team New Zealand. They've basically gone from the top to the bottom and stayed absolutely in exactly the same position, both teams. Some fantastic racing, absolutely. American Magic need every point, Stephen. They need to beat all the votes here. But what a performance by the young Italians. A lovely safe rounding, two boards in the water, keeping it safe, keeping it clean. I've got to say one thing, and I'm going to bring a motor racing sort of analogy back into it. When, you, you, when you're fighting each other, you're like Emirates Team New Zealand and American Magic, you, I wonder whether you sometimes forget who's behind you, because you're worrying about each other. Absolutely, you're focusing on the boats closely around you, but you only need to just have one little slide, one little wobble, and those boats behind you will be right up your exhaust pipe. So they are absolutely battling it out here. A really close cross here. We'll just listen as they come across, coming through here. Hey, no problems there. Hey, there they come. What are we thinking for the top? Uh, is, Gotta love that. Nice. Absolutely fantastic rating there. Really good communications. Umberto Molinari and Vittorio Bassaro doing a fantastic job here, sailing the boat fast on the jib. The little jib, the J3 in these conditions, means the boats are sailing absolutely as efficiently as they possibly can be. Maximum D power, they'll be full Cunningham, flat sails, low drag, setting up for high speed as they tack here, coming up to the top. Their job today is about keeping the boat flat and making sure they're sailing at their target boat speeds, which they're doing a fantastic job of. 
American Magic Maybe take a little bit less off. is on Got them. Had a horrible first day. You cannot escape that. Sitting at the bottom of the table. They need points. Yeah, much time easier. Just crossing American Magic there. Not much in it. The boat speeds are so even in these AC40s. All the teams sailing the boats really, really well. You can just see how tight everything is. Crossing tax just by mere boat, boat length changes from one side of the course to the other. Super even racing. Okay, the line is coming soon. Yes. Just one save on the over, Ruji. Yes, I agree. In three, two, one, and board down, and turning. And board down. They are cool. <laughs> he might be 19 years old, but he is completely unfazed. Uh, and I heard that when he was when he was a kid, he came into the Luna Rossa race, and they put him on the simulator, and he nailed it. <laughs> they have been waiting for him to grow up. So easy all the way to the boundary. That possibly That's a nice been a good choice getting him on board. Then that being the case, if he went all right on the simulator, but coming into the top here, really, really nicely. 285 meters to Emirates Team New Zealand. The majority of the fleet sitting around just under 30 knots. But how about this? They won race three yesterday. They could go back to back. And this is Luno Rosa Prada Pirelli. One leg to go, the final downward leg here on the Red Sea in the Neom America's Cup. Second to preliminary regatta, and they have a march on the fleet, but there is more to come. Watch out, here they go again. Pretty much a repeat of the last top mark rounding just in reverse. American Magic taking the left gate. Emirates Team New Zealand on the right gate, and they split the gate at exactly the top, same time again for the third time. Absolutely incredible. Enios Britannia, last time at the top gate, but gate in race number four. Ian Jensen setting the boat up for a manoeuvre here. Luna Rossa extending their lead downwind here, really pushing the ride height nicely on the foils here. You can see the black part of the foil there, trying to keep the white part of the foil out of the water. The higher they can be downwind with, when they're staying in control, the faster they will go. So they'll be wanting to really push high, lower the wetted surface area of that foil shaft and the rudder as well for low drag, high speed sailing. Take a look, they're sitting just around 37, 38 knots. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli, Emirates Team New Zealand sitting just under 42 knots as we see it. It is going to be an absolutely cracking finish for the podium position. Another cross coming between the two. All clean. This mine, it's all about the miners. Yeah, the race is definitely going on for the minor placings. Luna Rossa Prada probably just need to keep it clean and tidy here and they'll be in great shape. But the battle between American Magic and Emirates Team New Zealand is a fierce one and not far behind them, Ineos Britannia and Alinghi Red Bull Racing. It's all about pace, this race, isn't it? In, in, uh, lots of adjustment, a really hard race for the trimmers, you know, moving that cant the whole time, how much you tuck it in under the boat. But this is a good moment for Italy. Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli. Big win at the start, big win at the finish, cruising into just under 40 knots, and they will win race number four of the Neom America's Cup second preliminary regatta and get the maximum 10 points and put all the pressure on everybody else in the fleet. But who takes P2, who takes P3? Watch closely. Here comes Emirates Team New Zealand storming home. And they will take the seven points for second position. Yeah, that was my point as well. A bit out of single point. My word. That was frenetic. And American Magic finally get a decent haul of points. They'll pick up the five for third position. 
close one. Look at look at Lingy Red Bull Racing. They've got the hammer down. Don't look back, Enios. Oh, Enios gets fourth position, fifth position. We'll go to a Lingy Red Bull Racing. And Orient Express Racing got that boundary penalty at the start. We'll pick up the solitary point for sixth position. That's racing. That was what we came here to see. What absolutely fabulous conditions. As the time goes on during today, the wave state will slightly increase. So that will make the boat slightly harder to sail, but certainly make it a lot more interesting for us here in the commentary booth to be able to have a talk about what's going on. We definitely will see some more action as the, as the day goes on. Really looking forward to this next couple of races. So they predicted it's 12 to 13 uh, knots. We started around 15 and 16 to settle down for what I consider around 13 or 14, Shirley. And Orient Express Racing, bar the boundary penalty, they would have been in the game. I think they might have had some kind of mechanical issues. We saw them at one point just touching down a, a few times, and I guess we'll hear after the race. Let's go on board Luno Rosa Prada Pirelli. Marco Gradoni has his ears on Marco. Two races in a row. How how busy was that race for you? I think uh, we managed to do a well start. We take on Leeward of America. Then we had a close cross on upwind with them. They, we had a close cross with them, but they chose the right gate, which was the left. And on the first cross on now, we were ahead. So really good job by everybody. Then we went better and better during the race. So just keep like this. Jordi, more left. Marco, we've been talking about you, saying how fearless, how brave you are. You know, how much do you want this? And, and give us a feeling of what it's like on board. I mean, on board, uh, there was a good flow. We raced well, but now we have some stuff to do. All the team is working well. So keep doing like this. Thanks, Marco. I appreciate the time. Get ready for race number five. Thank you. Jumping out and ready to go. Have a quick review with the coach, Philippe Presti, as we remind you of how race four unfolded. Yeah, fantastic start by American Magic down the pin end of the Clear line start, there. Absolutely start. pinning their ears back down that end and sending it upwind. Top mark, Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli taking the left gate. American Magic taking the right gate. Really nice rounding by Luna Rossa. Not such a good one, American Magic. They're looking upwind here on leg two of six. Luna Rossa really, really pushing the boat hard. Coming into the gate there, a super tight moment there with American Magic and Emirates Team New Zealand. American Magic forced to tack away there and take the opposite gate. And then we saw a repeat of that again as the race unfolded. And the finish, Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli absolutely sending it downwind. Super high ride height, fantastic job there for the race win. And they'd be happy there on board Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli's chase boat. Very calm, Philippe Presti, the man with the grey hair. This is the key moment, Shirley, the start. Wasn't it? I mean, for American Magic, they had to get a good start, and they did. And for the Italians, they came off that line slightly back, but with pace and options. So win the start today in these conditions, win the race, but you've got to hold on. And they were all holding on. And let's just call them challenging conditions. Let's confirm the race result from race number four here in Jeddah. And Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli with a 26 second win over Emirates Team New Zealand, who were battling all the way with American Magic, Enios Britannia, Alingi Red Bull Racing, and Orient Express Racing making up the rest of the minor placings. Just looking at the fleet race statistics here, the average speeds of all the boats, pretty similar around 33 knots of boat speed, but the manoeuvres, Lunarossa Prada Pirelli, only 14 manoeuvres compared to Emirates Team New Zealand, 19. A real gain in distance sailed. Take a breath, race five is not too far away. High adrenaline, that's what the America's Cup has all been about, and high stakes, but the falling revolution has really taken it into a new realm. It's spawned a new generation of sailors, like Marco Gradoni, who fly rather than sail their boats. Okay, guys, step by step. Three, two, one. 
Well, the AC40 is a really fun boat. Uh, I like, I love the idea of having a lot of one design boats. Yeah, AC40 is a really cool boat. Uh, obviously, the, the dynamics are uh, similar to, to the C75, but the boat is uh, way lighter, so you can uh, feel a bit more the, uh, what you have under, uh, under your seat. When you're steering the boat, either you're steering the boat when you're to windward, or uh, you are taking care of the uh, flight adjustments. So you pass from one to the other, uh, which is a little bit what we did uh, in the last cup, how we were set up with Luna Rossa. The dual helmsmen of Francesco Bruni and Jimmy Spittel will stay super aggressive whenever they think they have a chance at a knockout punch. Definitely Luna Rossa made a very brave move on changing a big tradition, which was one helmsman, one tactician, and we came to the conclusion that uh, two husband was going to be a, a good decision. From an aerodynamic point of view and a race point of view, early on we started to look at just blocking the, the crews and potentially just have the mainsail trim and swapping sides. I think all of the teams would have been looking over the fence at, um, at, at, that, at Luna Rosa and they would have been going, why didn't we think of that? We've always got somebody uh, with their hands on the wheel that can see what's going on. And in the three starts, that was formidable. Two, one, four down. Clear start. Yeah, Francesco Bruni and I have a great relationship. I mean, I believe he's probably the best sailor in Italy to come out of Italy in terms of definitely the most well-rounded. Uh, for me, it's always a, a good uh, uh, growing uh, path with him. I always, I keep learning a lot from him and I hope he keeps learning a little bit from me. <laughs> yeah, sitting beside, behind Jimmy and Keiko on this boat is amazing, you know, it's like uh, they are driving this incredible machine that does amazing speeds and you are basically tuning the throttle of this engine. I think selling the AC40 well, you need to be ready for everything, for crashes, for uh, hard moments, for being wet. Yeah, I think you need to also have a very good communication with the rest of the crew. Uh, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Pressing more, open. Pressing more, okay, good angle there. Crowds have turned out for this second day of official racing in the Neom America's Cup preliminary regatta. And if they are like us, uh, we are taking very short breaths because it has been an absolute barn burner that first race. And we've seen why the AC40s are built to race in these conditions. I mean, the, yeah, the closeness of some of those uh, manoeuvres, absolutely spectacular. So that's exactly what the boats were designed for, close, high-speed racing, and that's pretty much what was showcased. It's about pace, isn't it, in these conditions? And we saw, you know, the Kiwis, they might just have a little bit of extra. They managed to pull back into it and take that second place, and now still leading the, the leaderboard by one point. Cannot wait to get into race number five and see what that showdown is going to be like. The last decade has seen high-performance sailboat racing transformed beyond recognition. The AC40 is the latest addition to America's Cup racing. As you've seen, they literally fly rather than ride over the waves. So what do the British think of these wonderful flying machines? I remember as a kid, you looked at some of the high-performance boats back then and 
try to force in your mind, well, what, where can it go from here? Where can it possibly go from here? And you know, someone said to me then that 30 years later we'd be ripping around at 50 plus knots in foiling monohulls. I would just laugh at them and go, that's, that's, just, that's just insane, it never happened. There's nothing quite like it. Everything is absolutely on the edge. The boat is noisy, it's juddering. The performance, the speeds, the G-forces, it is more akin to driving a race car around the track. The AC40, straight out of the box, it was a great bit of kit to get our hands on. It's got plenty of power and it is a very responsive, twitchy kind of boat. It's an impressive boat. It's very fast, dynamic, relatively lightweight, I'd say. You get two helms split each side. They don't move. There is definitely an element of multitasking and there's a lot of button pushing that's going on. It's quite a lot for the helms to do as well as steering the boat. They're quite heavily loaded up with all of the autopilot and the can operations. Being the trimmer, you're trying to get the absolute maximum performance out of the boat. So you're always weighing up how hard you push the trim and how close you keep the boat to the water and weighing that off against the risk of having touchdowns and, and having a, a big slowdown. The AC40, we've all got the same equipment. So it's really gonna come down to the fine tune adjustments and then just minimizing the mistakes, but also synchronizing between the front and the back of the boat. So it's gonna be pretty important, you know, to really hone in on those tiny, tiny differences that are gonna, you know, get you that inch or a couple of meters in front of the next boat to then be able to make the cross and to go where you want on the race course. You know, the America's Cup is both a sporting competition and a design race. Certainly in the early parts of a campaign, the focus is always around design. The racing element provides a nice line in the sand for teams to take that shift and really start looking at the nuances and the intricacies of racing these boats. When you're going and the water around the foil starts to boil and the boat starts vibrating, you're still on the edge of your seat and you're really trying to make sure that you don't screw anything up. I think the results will be important. You know, it'll be good for bragging rights, it'll be good for confidence. We want to you know, show that we can go out there and race at the highest level and get the results. And also as a sailing team ourselves, you know, to build on those relationships, put ourselves under pressure, get the team back on the water, be racing against our competitors. That's where we want to be. This regatta is a big deal. The man on the left is His Royal Highness Prince Abdulaziz bin Turki Al Faisal. He is the Minister of Sport and the driving force behind this regatta. He has a, has a, has a vision of bringing sport to Saudi Arabia to inspire not just the youth, but the whole population about a healthier lifestyle. And most importantly, to bring young sailors to a level where maybe one day they can be part of an America's Cup. I know they have the Olympics on their, in the, on their radar earlier, and that's why they have this magnificent academy in the Jetty Yacht Club and uh, uh, Prince uh, Abdulaziz uh, spent some time amongst the teams just to, you know, press the flesh and, and enjoy it. And beside him you can see Hassan al Kabani, who is the chairman of the Saudi Sailing Federation. Good times had by all and most importantly, it's all about moving forward the sport of sailing in a most positive manner. So this uh, a yachting academy is doing its job incredibly well. Perfect example, Shirley, about getting kids onto the water. Yeah, and it's lovely sailing conditions, isn't it? But more than this, the whole marine industry here is, is really a force. I mean, they're building quite impressive marinas up and down the coast here on the Red Sea. So I'd expect in the future, be a lot more sailing going on here. You talk about more marinas being built uh, up the coast, and I'm told they are already subscribed to uh, by boat owners. But I think this is the incredible part, is that people want to buy into the sport of sailing. There is Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. They've gone two from two now. They won race three yesterday. They've won the opening race here today, race number four, and they've done it almost in, in a manner that Emirates Team New Zealand did yesterday. Philippe Presti is their coach. He's on board their chase boat. What feedback, Philippe, have you had from the helm?
My apologies, Philippe. We didn't actually hear what you were saying then. I'll, I'll ask the question again. <laughs> uh, what feedback have you had from your helmsman? Well, sometimes no feedback's good feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing hurt can sometimes be a good thing. So oh, hold on, hold on a second. Sorry, we have a problem. Philippe, uh, Glenn here. Um, Stephen was just asking, what sort of feedback have you just received from the helmsman uh, after that last race? Obviously, it was a great feedback. We um, they had a great start and then managed to uh, to sell their uh, their course alone, and uh, that's when you make a difference. How high is the expectation then for race number five? Uh, sorry, all a second, we've got an issue here. Let's, let, let's just leave them uh, to deal out what they've got. Got an issue, get a tissue, it's the old story, but uh, most importantly, they have, they have shown that they are here to compete and the importance of this. Oh, just a little update too on the points table. I just with that win, they're just sitting one point behind uh, Emirates Team New Zealand. So uh, New Zealand are now sitting on uh, 29 points and Italy with that 10 points have gone to 28 points. Enios Britannia, I have just noted, have slipped up into the third position with Alinghi Red Bull Racing, if I'm correct. And I hope my numbers are, are as correct as our... Yep, there we go. Alinghi Red Bull Racing sitting in P4. Enios Britannia just moving closely. Most importantly, I know it's hard for them, but American Magic uh, sitting on six points. But they are going to need... They're going to need a win, surely, if they want to be in that match race tomorrow. They need some points, that is for sure. And I think they'll come out firing, trying to own that start like they did in the first race. If you're waiting for the start of race two today, there might be a five minute delay. The French have played their joker. You're allowed to ask once for a five minute delay to sort out a problem. And the French have a hydraulic issue. And we saw perhaps also Luna Rossa struggling with, with something mechanical. Let's go into the water. Uh, Peter Lester, uh, give us your summation of that race number four here today. Uh, my big moment was off the line, obviously, and as it worked out for Luna Rossa, a, a gap opened up for them for, due to the misfortune of the French. The French had a penalty owing off the line. They got a, actually a better start than Luna Rossa ahead of them, but when they had to take that penalty falling behind, that opened up a, a lane for Luna Rossa and um, they just said thanks very much and off they went and extended. Then the other key moment for me was on the last downwind leg and on the really it was Emirates Team New Zealand and American Magic were pretty well bow to bow uh, on opposite jives with one jive to complete. American Magic did a very small touchdown on their last jive and that gifted that sifted that second place to Emirates Team New Zealand. Peter, just looking at the sea state here, we've just got some fantastic shots here of American Magic tied up alongside their chase. The sea state seems to be getting slightly bigger as the day goes on. Pretty typical, um, you know, in a building breeze, the sea state getting a bit bigger. What's it feel like out there for yourself on the uh, chase one? Yeah, I agree, Glenn. Look, uh, the wind got up really quickly when we came out, and so it was dead flat water, and, and there was quite a decent breeze blowing probably in that 15, 16 knot range. I think it's moderated off from that, but with that prolonged period of, of good breeze, we have seen the, which is very familiar here, the sea state to build, and uh, that's exactly what we've got. So we've got a little less wind, but the sea state is up. So the sea state is up and, and more challenging condi conditions as we head towards race number five. The real talking point so far has been Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli in the last 24 hours, and it's 173 history. Only four countries have won the cup America, Australia, New Zealand, and Switzerland. So, if there's such a thing as the perennial bridesmaid, it's got to be Italy. But Sailing's Holy Grail has always just seemed to slip from their grasp. The Italian fans are super passionate about the America's Cup. They love it since uh, the first uh, Italian challenge. Well, I think that the love uh, for Italy of sailing or the sailing world, uh, everything started with Azzurra in the early 80s.
My first memory of the cup was uh, back in the days in 2000 with uh, Will Luna Rossa. I was just a kid in those years and I was just starting sailing. Luna Rossa won the Challenger Series and got into the final with MLST New Zealand, so that really got into the hearts of everyone. In 2007 in Valencia there was Luna Rossa, was uh, Mascalzone Latino and plus 39. It's plenty for a small nation like Italy. Italians are really passionate about the ocean and, and the water. But when it comes to Luna Rossa, it's like a football team. It's some of the fans, it's like a religion. Luna Rossa haven't put a foot wrong this whole race. Definitely looking class act up wind at the moment. Well, winning the Prada Cup in Oakland was a, a great uh, moment for the Luna Rossa team. Really, one of the greatest moments the Luna Rossa had uh, in his uh, time. They are going to the big show. They are going to challenge Emirates Team New Zealand for the 36th America's Cup. We knew Team New Zealand was faster than us. We knew since day one. A strong win for Emirates Team New Zealand in race one of the match. When we did the first race and we lost uh, the first race, Jimmy came to me before between races and he said, I think we can beat this guy. Nobody in New Zealand saw this coming. Everybody in Italy saw this coming. And Prada are really, really good. Final score in the America's Cup match, Defender 7, Challenger 3. The Italian team every time getting into the final of the World Soccer World Cup and losing it. Next time you want to win it, you know, so, so step by step we might get there closer and closer. I have no question that Luna Rossa can win the Cup. The, I have no doubt. Uh, we just uh, need to perform uh, well at the right time. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli have the AC40 in top gear. It Italy have tried for so long to try and win the cup, surely. They say trying to win the cup's like trying to climb Mount Everest, but gee, wouldn't they love it? You've got to get so much right on the day. I mean, that's why it's so compelling. It is so addictive. It was so good to watch that footage as well. They have come so close so many times. But I'm wondering, Glenn, what Jimmy Spittle and Francesco Bruni are thinking, watching their young team perform here in Jeddah. Yeah, look, you know, those guys are going to be watching. Absolutely, no, no doubt. But how proud must they be of the depth of talent that they're bringing through and what their team is providing. Max Serena and the rest of the team, you know, they're looking to the future and they're absolutely, you know, leaving a great legacy for who's coming through. They've got the skills, they've got the backup um, and they've got the hunger and the fire in the belly and those jets are absolutely full wick. Br briefly, can I drag you back to the last cup? They got close in the match early on, didn't they? Were, were, were there raised eyebrows? And did they, were, were there butterflies going, uh-oh, we might be in trouble here? <laughs> Come they, on. They were sailing their boat beautifully, and uh, to be fair, we probably weren't sailing our boat anywhere near its potential in those early couple of races after not honestly having done much racing. But at the end of the day, it's a package. It's a big team effort, and I'm um, just fortunate for us as sailors. Uh, we had a fantastic package and uh, managed to get the job done. So we are 33 minutes away from start at race number five. It really does make a magnificent spectacle watching these AC-40s fly around the Red Sea off the coast of Jeddah. And that first race, I don't know where you're watching this around the world, but if you've just caught your breath like we have, and the, the race finished about 20 minutes ago, hold on, because we're going to go, do it again two more times today. This is the race committee. The course for race five is course six, course six. Axis is 306, length is 1.4 nautical miles. Good luck. Always a good time to go onto the water, see if conditions have changed anywhere. Peter? 
Uh, I think the wind is down a little bit, Stephen. It, it looks even up the track. Uh, it's a bit greener over the, a bit more breeze. So that's, that shows to me a bit greener on the right hand side. But uh, it's all on that start, getting off the start clean and able to push hard, uh, you know, probably to a boundary. Just briefly, Pete, from where you sit, which is the strongest side of the course if you are, you know, getting your start sorted? Oh, that's a hard one, Stephen. I, I think, as I said, I think there might be a little bit more pressure on that right-hand side, uh, but not much. And it's, it, as we see here in Jeddah, it's very cellular, and uh, these gusts of breeze uh, build and, and evaporate very quickly. Thanks, mate. Appreciate that. Lingy Red Bull Racing. Currently sitting in fourth position on the points table, but certainly they have shown some, some speed this, this week. Yeah, absolutely. As we're coming into one minute, ten seconds before the start, we can see the fleet all coming through, jiving around onto port. They'll be looking at setting themselves up, sailing across the underneath side of the start line, jostling for position. They'll be spinning the boats around and looking to build speed in clear air with space around them so they can hit the line at full speed and take an advantage over their opponents. If you're Tom Slingsby, steering on the starboard side in American Magic, you have to win this start. It is the only option, Glenn. You cannot rely on, on getting back into it. Massive pressure on the American Magic team to get off the start line well. It's almost do or die for them this regatta. This race will be absolutely critical. Orient Express racing a little late coming down to get set up there. They will be on the back foot from early on here. You see all the boats spinning around now onto starboard tack, controlling the boats, putting the brakes on a little bit, winding the boats up now, foils out, foot on the gas, and they're away this 10 the seconds to go. Penalty USA, relative Switzerland. Oh, penalty USA, that's not what they want to hear. Clear start. Up. OCS, OCS penalty France get behind. OCS penalty GBR get behind. So the gate's been open for all the other teams. We are good to go, but look, OCS, GBR, France, it's penalty American Magic. GBR, OCS penalty. GBR, OCS penalty. Get behind. Oh, the start's so hard. You have to nail it. You uh, have GBR to. Is to go now because they are yeah, blocking there us. is plenty going on out there at the moment. Lots of lead changes coming up Pendry here. Pendry Clear USA. USA. Pendry Clear USA. France Clear. Penalty USA relative Switzerland. How much we got to kill here, Richard? You said penalty clear. Penalty clear, GBR. Second penalty, USA. Penalty clear. Absolutely. USA penalty clear. All happening at the moment. USA penalty just sounding like it's coming clear. They'll be wanting to clear that as soon as they possibly can so they can get their foot back on the gas again, getting away. Emirates Team New Zealand keeping out of trouble, sailing their boat cleanly, as is Luna Rossa Prada GBA, you still have 20 metres of penalty to go. They'll be looking at pressing hard on the jibs here, really sailing the boats fast across to that right-hand side of the course so they can set themselves up for clear air heading into the top end of the course. GBR penalty clear. It's all going on, isn't it? It's a little complicated, this. If you are over the line, you have to get 75 metres behind everyone who's started reasonably. If you have an infringement like the Americans against another boat, you have to be 75 metres behind them. A really good mode on the Bada and um, um, Timothinon, we are here and fast, really good mode. Good game. Happy with the setup? So, crazy start to race number five here in the Neom America's Cup preliminary regatta. Small lead to Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, trailed by Emirates Team New Zealand, and then it's a Lingy Red Bull Racing. Really, really tight racing here. Going to be some interesting intersections here as the boats tack out near that right-hand side of the course. Only a few metres in it here. Really, really close here. Alingi Red Bull Racing and Luna Rossa. Super, super tight cross here as they come across. Just crossing in front there. Alingi Red Bull Racing 
right up in front there with the leaders. They'll be looking to get a good manoeuvre in and they'll be right in the mix coming into the top of the course. So heading towards the top mark for the first time. Just take a look, a slight advantage. And I'm saying a slight advantage. Forget the advantage, it's gone back again. It's jostling between Luna Rosa Parada Pirelli and Emirates Team New Zealand, like two race horses heading towards the finish line. But hang on, we've still got five legs to go. We're only approaching the mark, the top mark for the first time. And Orient Express Racing are now coming into the game. Yeah. 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 Simo tax there with Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli and Emirates Team New Zealand. Going to be a really, really tight intersection at the top. Possibly not laying the top gate here. Possibly could see another couple of manoeuvres coming up as we see Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli drop their board, tacking. Looking like they're going to take the split and the left gate, extremely close. Emirates Team New Zealand and Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli almost even as they go around the top gate. But look, two other teams hunting them as well. Orient Express Racing, Luna Alingi Red Bull Racing. Ooh, Orient Express Racing. Ah, it's a little touchdown and then top mark with a way and flying again. Yeah, really loose mark rounding there by Orient Express Racing, the French team. Really, really not doing a tidy job there, but um, you know, they managed to get round and Alinga Red Bull Racing just out their side door. So as it lays at the moment, Emirates Team New Zealand ahead of Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. Then it's Orient Express Racing, Alinga Red Bull Racing, Enios Britannia and American Magic. First downward leg. Who's going to look the stronger? Who's found the right part of the course? Emirates Team New Zealand do such a good job of avoiding the chaos. They always seem to get in a position where they can sail their own race and put the pedal down hard. Let's go on board, Emirates Team New Zealand. Yeah, I don't think there's enough to hurt. Keep it simple. That's a pressure here. Yeah. I feel like it was soft on that boundary, so yeah. best pressure's down the middle. They have the numbers here. The boundary, or? Back to you a little bit. Oh, fast mode on us, Pete. Just knocked a bit of Yeah. Right. It's a good left, Pete. I feel like we're making gains here, so like normal ley line with a good apex for left mark. Feel the good face. Yeah, left face. Uh, what, 25 to boundary? Sorry, ley line. Any bounce here, here? I love listening to these guys. <laughs> I mean, they've sailed together forever, and they always sound like they are loving fish. every moment yeah. in the boat. You like sailed the with them, Glenn. Glenn. Yes. Yeah, look, it's pretty enjoyable yachting in these conditions. Mark. You know, you're getting bounced around, you're pushing hard, you're pushing the boats to the absolute max Happy as well as yourself. That's it's three, all about yeah. being chilled and actually keeping the tempo Fine. really smooth. You don't need to get excited, you don't need to do anything abnormal, you just need to sail the boat accurately and normally and keep the comms clear. Happy. Peter Lester, they're coming towards you. What do you make of this performance uh, in this race from Emirates at this point in time? Uh, this is a ripper between Emirates yeah, okay. Team New Zealand and Luna Rossa, and uh, they're showing both teams are showing wheels. A bit like the previous race off the start, which was crucial, it opened up for Emirates Team New Zealand and Luna Rossa, and that's how they've got a jump on third and fourth. Emirates Team New Zealand approaching the bottom mark for the first time after a frenetic start by the whole fleet and giving umpire Richard Slater plenty to do. Emirates Team New Zealand around the mark, the bottom mark for the first time at pace. And you know he's following them around the opposite mark. That will be Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli looking for their third win. Emirates Team New Zealand looking for their third win. And here come Alingi Red Bull Racing. Got it. Yeah, both those two teams dropping their windward board down, extra grip for the turn. That putting the board down just gives you extra shaft immersion, which actually gives you more grip around the corner. Then they raise the board back out again. American Magic, if you're coming with a wider apex, you can keep your speed on. You've got the grip. If you're doing a high speed turn, you need the extra grip. How careful do you have to be rounding the marks with these boats and the pressure on the boat itself? huge g-forces coming around the mark so you really really need to turn the boat smoothly trim the boat smoothly and not overdo it as you can easily slide out and blow the foil out of the water so it's a very delicate balance of grip and keeping the pace on well coming up for the first cross on this leg it looks like the kiwis 
nicely ahead of the Italians, but both these boats, they have a clicker pace. They just seem, every time I look at the speeds, they look slightly faster. Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli, in my eye, just sailing with a slightly wider cant angle, running a little more tip piercing than Emirates Team New Zealand. Sailing the boat, a click flatter. Um, slightly different setup to Emirates Team New Zealand, but both seem to be doing the business. Maybe explain that a little bit. I mean, Cant is, is how much the foil is under the boat. Yeah, look, the cant angle on the boat, the wider it is, the more powerful setup you have. So the more power you can use in the rig, the lower the hull is to the water. So good for aerodynamics. You don't want to tip pierce the lured foil though too much. If that lured foil, the horizontal starts piercing the water too much, that's extra drag. So it's a balance of keeping the drag low, keeping the platform right, and trying to keep as much power on the boat as you can. It's a real juggle and a real delicate balance. So if I were to try and hold a ruler underneath any of these boats, if it were to keep straight, I'd be doing, they would be doing the job perfectly. Keeping the boats, or keeping the platforms close to the water aerodynamically is really good. It's effectively, kindedly connecting the aero package to the water surface is what you're trying to do. So in these conditions, keeping that platform very low to the water and sealing is very, very fast. On to the Emirates chase boat. Uh, Ray Davies joins us right now, live off the chase boat. Uh, Ray, this one's, this one's tight. Oh, no, it's great, isn't it? Fantastic, real close. Both racing, right? They're just ducking us there right at the moment. Well, I'm probably watching it live a few seconds ahead of you guys. But, um, yeah, amazing race. Fantastic conditions. Are these the sort of races that have the, the whole team on the edge of the seat? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, we try to keep the same consistent sort of vibe, whether we're winning or losing, or the conditions are windy or not. We try not to get too emotional about it all, so um, meat and potatoes every day. <laughs> Hang on to that vibe, Ray, we'll talk later. Ray Davies, coach of Emirates Team New Zealand, who again is just a, a slight lead. In fact, my apologies, I misread the leaderboard. It's Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli with that marginal lead now. Keep up, keep up. There is nothing wrong with meat and potatoes every day. Uh, and that's a little bit about the Kiwi style, isn't it? Win or lose, just keep it, keep it steady, keep it even. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about keeping it smooth, and that's exactly what these two top teams are doing at the moment. They're really going head to head. Not much in it at all at the moment as they come towards the top mark. They must be pinching doing that. So left turn. Left turn for us. This is the umpires. Penalty GBO relative France. Penalty complete. Around the mark they go, Luno Rosa, Prada, Pirelli. It's almost an identical opposite drives by both teams as they head down halfway through this race. Is it a two-horse race? Luno Rosa, Prada, Pirelli, Emirates Team New Zealand, take your bet. And that's a Lingy Red Bull Racing, showing there in this game as well. American magic. They go around in fourth position. Orient Express Racing got their, their mechanical sort of, and they're away. Yeah, too much GBs there on Orient Express Racing. Way too early on the front sail ease there. That really unloaded the, the boat and made it really hard for the helmsman to turn the boat around the mark there. So, here, look at this. Oh, that is not what you want to see coming towards you there. A super, super late avoiding manoeuvre there from Ineos Britannia. That could have been ugly really, really easily. They did a great job to avoid. Remember also, there's an imaginary rhomboid round the boat. So it's not just the bit of boats you see, there's the electronic boundary, if you like, around the boat. A fantastic battle coming into the bottom end of the course here. Emirates Team New Zealand and Luna Rossa absolutely pushing as hard as they possibly dare coming down to the bottom of the course here. It's going to be a battle all the way to the finish here. So it's Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli on leg four of six here on the Red Sea in Jeddah. And now about 60 metres ahead of Emirates Team New Zealand. Maybe it's going to be the battle. Who wants to be the first of three wins? 
You're about to find okay, out. And don't move because these boats are doing what they were built to do. Fly and fly fast. And boat coming up. Lots of chatter. Let's listen to the chatter on Luna Rosa. Probably it's going to be an early deck. If you, if you do that, no. Uh, let's, no. Race, let's race the clock. It's a bigger right here, Marco. 3-1-5. Okay. Wind is keep trending right. Safety, tranquility. So these guys are already talking about what so they're going to do on the next upwind no, no, leg. No, That's no, what no, you no, need no. to do. Just to get around the track in good shape, they're basically playing a game of chess and they're already thinking three or four moves ahead. Down to the bottom mark. And for the last time, they get up on that one leg. It's Luno Rosa Prada Pirelli, Emirates Team New Zealand. It's still Luno Rosa Prada Pirelli with that marginal lead on the defenders of the 37th America's Cup. And they both have a strong lead on Luno Rosa, uh, excuse me, Alingi Red Bull Racing. Round that mark ahead of American Magic, who have got some speed on now. Peter Lester on the water, nothing between the front two. Oh, it's a brilliant race. Now, I'm picking um, that Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli looked to have a clicker speed on the upwind leg, and I thought Emirates Team New Zealand, especially on the first downwind, maybe we're sailing a little bit deeper and maybe just BMGing a little bit faster downwind, but the margins between those first and second is very, very close, as it is for third and fourth with um, Alinghi, uh, Red, Red Bull Racing and Magic. There's, there's two fascinating races and the margins between them is minimal. Really, really close cross coming up, Shirley. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is going to go right to the end. The speed seem really similar to me. Let's go on board, see what the chat is like. It's nice you steering on to it down a bit, Luke. Yeah, I'll try numbers, it's good. We saw 20, a, little, uh, 20, a little bit patchy here for the next little bit. Uh, 20 to the boundary. Good little, good little Just try and find a good lane out of here, Pistol. Other 10 looks okay. Oh, he's about as good as it's going to get. Up the a little one on the bow. Right here at the moment, unfortunately. Oh, okay, probably on this. Okay, three, two, one, four down. Fine. I think we're just turning a little fast that way. I can clear the board. Ah, mm. uh, they're crossing by one at the moment, unfortunately. There's the Italians cross coming. Well, how is the cross? So what the mindset's yeah, like on board Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli at the moment. Okay, so both crew on the leeward side of both boats at the moment, eyeing each other up as they come across. Are they going to hit? Uh, unsure. We've got to go they do. You'll one, down. down. Are they having hit? They have now. Three, board two, down. one, board down. And Emirates Team New Zealand tacking away there, getting out of that Fine. dirty air. A beautiful job by Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. Just hitting Emirates Team New Zealand Good. there, making nice them... In, you know, forcing them into a manoeuvre to keep their air clear. One in left from this, from now on. Oh, it's made. Right is better now. Happy with this mod? A little bit on the high side. The Italians, they like the right. They are getting there. I think they're a little bit higher, Glenn. It's not that they're necessarily faster. They're, they're just making great roads into this upwind leg. Yeah, again, just got their cant angle just a little wider. They're just sailing a fraction more powerful than Emirates Team New Zealand, and it might just be giving them a click. It's just, a, a, my opinion, viewing the boats there, viewing the boats there, but coming into another manoeuvre here. Heading for the top mark for the last time in race number five of this Neo America's Cup preliminary regatta, the second regatta. Next will be in August of 24. The 75s will come out to play. 
But I tell you right now, the AC40s are putting on a show. And these two boats, Emirates Sea New Zealand and Lunarossa Prada Pirelli, are banging heads. Yeah. The third race one. Who will get it? Yeah. This is why these boats are the 2023 World Sailing Boats of the Year. The racing is absolutely fierce, and these guys are doing 30 knots upwind. Around goes Lunarossa Prada Pirelli. It's almost in. Like two ballet dancers doing together in sync. Emirates nice Team New Zealand. Yeah, it's a jibes and away yeah, they go. Yeah. Hold on, we're in for a finish. Get past the green. Back into the French here, they've had a, they've had a slow tank. Then there's another mini battle behind it. American Magic. I think you're Red Bull Racing. For the left turn. Who wants that third position and the five uh, points? Win. Could be a valuable five points, and we know American Magic want as many points as they can. Express Racing, Enios, Britannia. Round the top mark for the last time and head home. And a huge moment nice here in the race, coming down on the final leg to the Again, finish the there. Emirates Team New Zealand one. just one. crossing one. there, one. just squeezing through one. there. One. Emirates yeah. Team New Zealand, this is going to be an extremely one. close one. battle one. all the way to the finish. Both boats pushing one. the ride one. height one. as hard one. as they do. You can see the autopilot working hard to keep the foils in the water. One more manoeuvre to go from each team. So lead change on the downwind leg for the final time in race number five. It's been bouncing between these two boats, Emirates Team New Zealand and Lunarosa Prada Pirelli. Right now, it's Emirates Team New Zealand, but do not, do not count out the Italians. Bye, boys. Please coming. Five, two, oh, how good are the graphics here? Just showing the distance between the two boats. There is absolutely nothing in it as Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli do their final dive. This will be the race to the finish. Bow on bow as they come in towards the finish here. Both boats doing around 40 knots of boat speed. Absolutely pushing it as hard as they can here. Stephen, it doesn't get much closer than this coming into the bottom mark here. Two thoroughbreds racing to the line and their jockeys, because they have multiple jockeys on them, are doing the job in these magnificent conditions on the Red Sea. Right now it's Emirates Team New Zealand with the advantage. Flying across the bow and bang, they get it! It's win at number three for Emirates Team New Zealand, followed closely by Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. Now that's racing, folks. What a fantastic race, Shirley. I mean, that would have been one of the most exciting races I'm sure all those guys have ever done. I mean, absolutely pushing the boats as hard as you possibly can. And a Lingi, Red Bull Racing and American Magic coming in, Stephen. Late protest from American Magic, but it will be a Lingi Red Bull Racing. Get the final podium position against American Magic. How costly is that going to be for this campaign here in Jeddah for American Magic? And then it's Ineos Britannia, one jibe to go. The French on a home straight, but it will be Ineos Britannia that should pick up fifth position here on the Red Sea, and that they do. And France will complete the fleet in sixth position. Say it again, out of breath. Yeah, it's uh, definitely time for a little cup of tea and a lie down here in the commentary booth. That was uh, really exciting racing, and that's exactly what we've been wanting to see. Here's the protest from uh, American Magic. Yeah, really close cross there. I think, in my opinion, uh, which is not always yeah. right, but I think a Lingi Rebel racing all clear there. I don't think there was any foul uh, coming through the finish there. It'd be interesting to see us. what the umpires saw in that, but I, I didn't see anything that. I think it was a last gasp by American Magic to uh, gain a point.
So it's Emirates Team New Zealand that get their third win. The first team to pick up another maximum 10 points. That will push them to 39 points on the points table and give them a really strong advantage. Not over yet, mind you. Let's just remember there's still three races to go before that winner-takes-all match race final. But when you're sitting on 39 points, there's still another race to go. Uh, you'd be feeling confident about where you are sitting at the moment. I think, to be honest, the uh, the top sort of two teams in that last race looked like they were sailing their boats absolutely beautifully. Let's go on board, Pete Burning. That must have felt like a match race against uh, Luna Rosa. Yeah, we couldn't buy a shift there for a while, um, but yeah, we did a good job hanging in and um, you know, taking that one opportunity. We, we got a finally in phase at the end. And Pete, how, how surprised were you that you couldn't shake off the Italians? And do you think they've got a, a little edge on the upwind legs? Uh, yeah, I think it was out of phase. You were that second uh, Most boats would have gained on us, but um, yeah, no, nah, it was one design boat. So everyone can see exactly what everyone's doing. And, um, um, you know, any one of these teams could win this next race, so you now we've just got to go and prepare and uh, put our best foot forward for the, the last one of the day. Uh, Pete, it's Lenny. Just a real quick question, mate. How uh, how brave are, are, are you guys flying the boat high at the moment? It just looks like you're, you're all pushing the right height really high, which looks great. And um, just wondering how loose it is on board for you guys. Uh, yeah, we're pretty comfy. Um, a bit less comfy here. It feels like we're about to <laughs> All right, mate, we'll leave you alone. Um, you, get, you get yourself ready for ra race number six, mate. Yeah, sweet. Well played. No, we're just back off a little on the jobs, but everything else is pretty comfy. So, Pete Burley, pretty happy. You know, always always matter-of-fact as Pete. Yeah, no, we're pretty comfy uh, just cruising around, which is as you do. You know, you've done it long enough. It's, uh, it all feels pretty, pretty normal. Let's take a look at how race number five unfolded, because there was plenty to talk about, particularly at the start. Yeah, race number five, all boats pretty well getting off the line in, in good shape. And surely they had their ears pinned back heading up win. It was a clean start and a clean first leg for these two boats, almost simultaneously going round that top mark. Yeah, leg three. This was really where the battle between Emirates Team New Zealand and Lunarossa Prada Pirelli really started heating up. Both boats trading tacks and some, and some tight crosses. Lunarossa Prada Pirelli dropping the windward foil, ripping the boat round on the upwind here. Emirates Team New Zealand a little wider apex, keeping the pace on. And coming down to the finish, Emirates Team New Zealand just getting the advantage over Lunarossa Prada Pirelli. Both teams will be extremely pleased with those results. And beautiful breeze, and hopefully we get some more good racing ahead. Just what the sailors want to see, plenty of breeze as Emirates Team New Zealand get the four-second win over Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. Alinghi Red Bull Racing, strong performance by them, followed in by New York American Magic, who may or may not have done enough. Enios Britannia and Orient Express Racing uh, completing that fleet race. Race number five here in Jeddah. One more to come today, two tomorrow. And then, of course, the winner takes all match race to decide the inaugural winner of this Jeddah regatta. Look at those yellow numbers. That dictates why Emirates Team New Zealand are sitting atop of the pile with 39 versus the 35 for Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. Lingi Red Bull Racing, Enios Britannia not out of the hunt. I don't want to put the mocker on the other two teams, but Orient Express Racing and New York American Magic, lots of work to do. Take a look at the race summary just to tell us why Emirates Team New Zealand picked up win number three. Well, looking at the flight time there, 100% fly time for Emirates Team New Zealand, just a click ahead of Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli, and surely only one manoeuvre differentiating those two top teams. Yeah, the top teams just a click quicker than the rest of the fleet. Just think, hold on, there's still one more race to come today on the Red Sea here in Jeddah. You've seen it today, consistency, tactical boat positioning and maintaining 100% flight time. That's the key to success here at Jeddah. The one design AC40s reward technique, not design. And if there's one team out there to the point to prove, a Lingy Red Bull Racing.
the SE40 is an amazing boat to sell. Uh, it's uh, a tiny uh, go-kart compared to the SE75, but uh, you can uh, to sell uh, at that speed on a small boat like that. It's an uh, it's amazing experience and uh, you can really feel the speed uh, much more than uh, on the big boat. It's like a scooter, it's going super fast, it's really agile and the feeling is just like pure adrenaline. The boat is going fast, it's really easy to handle. Everybody's got gonna sail on the same boat. It, we couldn't expect any better. On the SE40, my role is uh, to be uh, the driver, the helmsman, but as well uh, you share the, the load uh, and the control of the autopilot with the other helmsman on the other side, and uh, you can uh, trim the right eye, the, the trim target, and the cant angle. We are four people, so four people is not a lot, so we are very, very busy. The trimmer on the AC40 is uh, sitting behind the helmsman. As you're in the cockpit, uh, you don't feel a lot of uh, wind edge there, so you're quite covered and the vision is narrow because you have the sail on the side. Then you look, to see, it's only when you look the screen, you see the true wind speed and you're, uh, you're actually boat speed and you're like, oh wow, we're going quick there. As a trimmer on, on these boats, we are on one tack, which I mean the main, when you're on the other tack, which I mean the jib, and obviously that give us a little bit of freedom to uh, help out with the communication and the racing. Telling the, the AC40 is a bit new sensation for everyone. The, the fact to be sit in a really low end boat, it's a, a new way to, uh, to sail a boat, so it's really interesting. Every, every guy on the, our team are, uh, are uh, sailing already a lot of time on the floating boat, on the mud, on the flying phantom, on 69F. So we are, I think, uh, in good advantage compared the, to the other team. The makeup of our team, uh, is, team uh, is really around sailing and, uh, and the use uh, and the anger of, uh, of winning. Uh, we, uh, we share different experience, but uh, some of us are uh, spending 20 years almost on a floating boat. So uh, we have a really good experience there, but uh, the cup is new, so uh, we are here to, uh, to prove uh, our point and, uh, and win. Crowds are out for day two official racing on the Neom America's Cup second preliminary gasa. And as you can see in the foreground, the boats have been flying. It's been it's been whizzing by and the conditions feel a bit like practice day race number one here about four days ago when we had conditions like this and all teams were absolutely, I'll say it, flogging their boats and seeing how much the boats could take. Let's go uh, down onto the wall of Peter Lester because I know Peter, late in the day on practice day one, conditions changed and the, and the sea waste, there's starting to be a lot more chop. What's it like now? Yeah, similar to day one, the seaway is up. It just continues because it's a good breeze now. Right now, I think the breeze is up a little bit, a bit like what it was when we first came out. And we've, we're seeing 15, 16. That's what it's looking like to me. Also, it's got a bit more hazy, and when it got hazy earlier in the day, again, the breeze popped up. Seaway, yeah, well, it's going to build as, as the breeze builds, but just, uh, it, it looks superb, and uh, wow, if, uh, the, the first two races are anything to go by, look out. <laughs> I, I, the other I, thing running through my mind is is the, the variable, you know, the, the variables that are in the game, those uh, penalties, and what effect that has on the boats that are clearing penalties, and we, we, I think Luna Rossa and New Zealand benefited from that in that previous race. And then, of course, this wind is moving around about eight degrees. 
and, and Peter Burling talked about keeping in phase, and maybe he felt they got out of phase uh, a couple of times on those up. Hey, Peter, not, not hard to talk about Luna Rosa, Prada, Pirelli and Emirates Team New Zealand, but the other team that's just been sniffing around and is still in, well in the hunt, you've got to look at Lingy Red Bull Racing. Oh, they look good. And, and in fact, if the, the leading boats ahead of them play too much with each other, of course, that uh, Lingy Red Bull Racing and American Magic but we're not that far behind. And if, um, you know, to play the game too tough in a fleet race, the, the boats behind you will catch up. But a Lingy Red Bull Racing... Uh, look rock solid and in fact um, we talked a lot about French and Villanova uh, right now the team that's filling that gap is uh, Alingi Red Bull Racing are looking good. Thanks Peter pressure the time be back onto the water don't you worry about that because uh, we are starting to wind ourselves up and not hard to be wound up Glenn about the racing we've seen so far two races today a win each to uh, Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli and Emirates Team New Zealand feels like the match again back in Auckland in 2020 does it <laughs> yeah it's uh, quite nice to watch it on the tally this time instead of watching out the window I must say it's uh you it's know pretty how, exciting you know in the little wise, don't you <laughs> <laughs> no it's pretty good I'm, I'm quite enjoying it in here in the commentary booth with uh, yourself Stephen and Shirley both very experienced campaigners uh, and I have my L plates firmly on here, learning as much as I possibly can, but it is fantastic to see how well these teams are sailing these boats around. I only got about three minutes now to go to the start line, but some um, conditions absolutely perfect as we go forward, Shirley. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli almost racing away. They look like they're racing away from the police shield. It does look good, doesn't it, these, these boats when they're at speed? This is what we came for, Stephen, and they are getting better and better, braver and braver, faster and faster. This still reminds me, I'll, I'll go back to practice day number one when we saw them basically win race number one and the, the call come out. They're you know, like they're, they're stolen the fire and they're driving like that. The Italians know how to race. This is the race committee. The course for race six is course six, course six. The access is 306, length is 1.32 nautical miles. Good luck. Yeah, sitting here uh, in around sort of 16 to 17 knots of breeze. Quite a good seaway here as we're coming in towards two minutes before the start here. Absolutely epic conditions for these boats. It's going to be some fantastic racing, Stephen, as we come forward. Let's talk about that seaway, though, because we've seen as they're starting to roll up and get themselves into that start sequence, they are battling the seaway. Yeah, the boat's sailing around um, with all three foils in the water, both dagger foils down, if you like, in the water. is a very sort of safe way to get the boat around. You don't have to concentrate too hard trimming. It's almost like you can have a bit of a rest when you're cruising around at this point in time. All teams at the moment will be just getting their time on distance sorted out to get themselves set up for the start line as they come across here now. Let's quickly talk about how hard it is to nail that start. It was so messy, that last start. So many boats over the line and fringing each other. You just got to get clean and get off. You want to go after Alinghi? Yes, but America is locking our drive, so we cannot go. We have the like yes. front, yeah. we go around the media. Just coming up to one minute now from the start, all boats sort of coming down, organising roughly where they want to be for that final manoeuvre. It's all about time on distance and getting your boat set up to be able to pull the trigger at the right time to get an advantage over your opponents. They have a computer, they have software to help them, which gives them the time to burn to, to both ends of the line and the middle of the line. Still, you need to work it out yourself. Yet yeah, that time to kill number is the number that all the crews will be talking about as they come into the bottom there. You'll hear two to kill, three to kill. That's the time they need to wash off. They need to slow down, burn that time up. And they want to hit the line on time at full speed or even over speed as they get off the line. 15 seconds to play, the final race of day number two. It is race number six. Who's in the better position? Who might get the whole shot, as you might say? Emirates Team New Zealand getting very close to the line. Three, two, one to go. Clear start, clear start. Clear start, no penalties given, we're clean to go, protest by GBR, but we are away in race number six. Penalty Italy, relative GBR. 
at about 20 metres to go. Oh, Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli copying a penalty there for infringing Ineos Britannia. Emirates Team New Zealand leading the charge out to the left-hand boundary there. Very, very tightly packed field behind them. They'll be all working out where they need to tack for a clean lane heading across the course to the right-hand side. Take a look at that penalty. Replay here. Not going into one or no. Not us, not us, not us. Prada Prelli. He'd lead 10 more metres for your penalty. Yes, we are behind GBR. We are behind clear. GBR. It's coming clear. in. Pen clear. Clear. Just looking at this replay, Lynn Ross Prada Pirelli just tacking a little bit too close there to Ineos Britannia. A little bit of an unforced error there by Lynn Ross Prada Pirelli. As we're looking at the race, Shirley coming into the top half of the course here. What do you make of that? Oh, it's tight, isn't it? They're almost, they're almost in a line. Akiri's really well positioned. Clear air, heading over to that right-hand side. Sometimes you look at those manoeuvres where they talk about the relative penalty and you go, man, with a Formula 1 guard, great pass, Bell, great pass. Snuck up on the inside. Come on, Mr Slater. Yeah, France come back with an easy cross. Happy to take the right, aren't we? Yeah, our race is with America. Hey, just hear the American Magic team there and the Emirates team, New Zealand team, talking about each other. They're about 150 metres away from each other, but eyeing each other up. The crew on the leeward side of the boat gauging how their opponents are going. They'll be both looking to uh, get the advantage over each, each other here. It's congested, isn't it? I mean, we're used in the Americans Cup to seeing two boats, but particularly this first leg, they're so close together, it's so congested, and visibility so hard. Emirates Team New Zealand just slamming American Magic there. American Magic will just do a little high mode there. They'll try and gauge off, keep their air clear. They've actually tacked away, so they'll go out, try and put themselves in a position where they can keep sailing at maximum speed, maximum VNG. Orient Express Racing and Alinghi. Alinghi choosing to tack away there early. French going all the way to the boundary. The Swiss team have had a good leg here, a lovely clean start. They've got good pace. They decided when they wanted to tack, to line up for the top mark. They're doing well. The really cool thing we've seen today is battles within battles, you know. We've seen battles at the front, battle in the middle, battle at the back, and uh, all the sailors will be loving this. The Red Bull Racing. The Emirates Team New Zealand just giving a Lingy Red Bull Racing a little bit of breathing space there. We're looking at American Magic coming across there on starboard. They do have right away, but... So, heading towards the first mark, the top mark for the first time. They just be a Lingy Red Bull Racing in pole positions. They go around that top mark for the first time, and it is, but look at... American Magic getting in under Emirates Team New Zealand. Have they made it work though? Yeah, Emirates Team New Zealand there, choosing really late to uh, take that left turn. Sacrificing a little bit of ground there, but they're in good shape at the moment, as is American Magic and Alinghi Red Bull Racing, extending on this downwind leg in fantastic conditions. That was a beautiful move by the Swiss. Squeezed off the Kiwis, they had to tack. Off they went. Two, one, four. Yeah, really nice sailing there by Alinghi Red Bull Racing. A fantastic lay line, beautifully executed there. They're absolutely charging down that far boundary there. Let's go on board American Magic. They desperately need big points. They need a win. What is going on? What's the chatter like? And also the French are out there. Oh, the Alinghi. Big Alinghi cross at the moment. That we will a right turn, so ideally we're leading the Kiwis Check back. Check the tram, is this what we want? Three. Yeah, copy. So we are looking and listening at Lingy Red Bull Racing. We've got 50 metres in front of Emirates Team New Zealand. Right turn. It's a one, one time speeder. Lighter, lighter, yeah. 
drift uh, through turn here. I do the lead back high. Yep. Many bit left. Long before the lead. 20 uh, seconds. Uh, 5 seconds for the lead line. Less Four. Good left here. Okay. Giving in. Left here, Max. 5. Okay. Three. We're looking two, at Max Bachelin. Okay, fully made. Uh, 30. For up to 2. 1. For up. Yeah, really nice sounds on board the boat there as that hydraulic cant system lowers one foil arm, lifts the other one up, all battery operated. You love that sound? Uh, not uh, necessarily, but uh, it's a necessary sound if you want to go sailing in these AC40 class boats. Sounds a lot worse than it is. Cross at the bottom mark. Who gets to the bottom mark for the first time? It looks like it will be. Oh, take your pick. Let's call it a photo. Emirates yeah, Team New Zealand Lingy Red Bull Racing. Around the bottom mark for the first time. time. Followed through by American Magic. In comes Enos Britannia, Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli. Remember serving that penalty. And then it's yeah, Orange Express Racing. Got a feeling we're going to have a repeat of the last race, but there's a different player and it's called Lingy Red Bull Racing. Lingy Red Bull Racing doing a lovely job of getting their boat around the track. They've been able to finally get themselves in a position where they can sail off their jib really, really cleanly. Matching tacks with American Magic there. Just putting a loose cover on them, basically just tacking close to boundary. Emirates Team New Zealand coming in from the left-hand side of the course. Sailing quite fast numbers. Be really interesting to see how they come in to intersect through the middle of the course. Let's go to the chase boat of Alinghi Red Bull Racing. We're joined by Pietro Sabello. Pietro, got to love what you're seeing right now. What was the talk after race number five ahead of this one? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, finally, a good, uh, good uh, race for us. We struggled a bit with the starts uh, today, and the uh, last one was also not uh, great, but uh, the guys played uh, magically the shifts and the lanes, uh, the upwind, downwind, and uh, so far it's going good. They are also uh, covering the field quite well. Uh, just quickly, Petro, what's your feeling on the speed, on the differences between New Zealand and the Lingi? Yeah, it seems uh, uh, Team New Zealand is, uh, is selling on a faster mode, uh, upwind and downwind. We are uh, uh, a bit uh, more looking into angles. We are trying to adjust uh, this uh, during the day. And, uh, yeah, it seems uh, it's going a bit better. Thanks for your time, Pietro. Let's let you sit back and enjoy this race as it unfolds. Peter, what do you make of this? Another battle, although Emirates Team New Zealand dropped into third position and the Americans have put the hammer down somewhat. Yeah, it's very close at the front. The right-hand side is probably a touch favoured, and um, it looks like Emirates Team New Zealand just want to go over there and have a piece of that. Aligi Red Bull Racing, uh, the bottom mark was really tight, but they managed to get in there. The, the loser at the bottom mark was actually American Magic. They touched down at a crucial time as they are approaching that bottom mark for the first time. So as it stands, as we head up to complete the halfway mark of race number six, a Lingy Red Bull Racing with a slight advantage on Emirates Team New Zealand, followed by American Magic, Luno Rosa, Prada, Pirelli, Ineos Britannia and Orient Express Racing. Yeah, really, really tight between these top three boats. Yes! Emirates Team New Zealand just splitting the... Splitting the apple there, passing in between American Magic and Lunar, uh, sorry, Alinghi Red Bull Racing, pardon me. All boats sailing really, really nice here. You can see the seaway starting to increase here as Alinghi Red Bull Racing tack across, really just controlling the race from where they are, giving American Magic a little bit of dirt. So really, really close racing here as we come in towards the top gate. American Magic did well to get back in the game here, but now they've got Switzerland right on their air. So right now, subtle lead change. Let's call it a subtle lead change. Goes back in favour of Emirates Team New Zealand ahead of Alinghi Red Bull Racing. Final tack to approach. Will it be for Emirates Team New Zealand? Because Alinghi Red Bull Racing is stalling in. Clean cross in the top mark, about to be rounded at the halfway mark, and it will be lead change again. Blink of an eye. And then will be a Red Bull Racing. Oh! 
Messi rounding by Lingy Red Bull Racing, but still up and flying. Yeah, that was a really loose mark rounding there. Almost having a big moment there. Just saved it. That's what you call a tank slapper as they came around the top there. Nearly a face full of water and a near over the handlebars there. Just managed to save it. But you can see how much ground they've lost to American Magic by that wobble. Just We'll have a quick look at that again if we can coming around the mark there. Very, very loose moment there. Just see them coming around the mark there. Traveller pinned on the leeward side. Probably a bit more main sheet he's needed there. Oh, that hull working really hard. Not an ideal mark rounding for a Linger Rebel Racing. They managed to survive though, which is the most important thing. Oh. Yep. Basically got stuck there with the traveller pinned on the leeward side. So more main sheet ease needed there. A little more twist, and that would have unsettled the boat and made it get around a little cleaner. Could have gone sideways, but I wonder, uh, with the amount of pace going on... Really close cross here, coming down to the halfway mark. Emirates Team New Zealand Whoa. sneaking through in front of Lingy Rebel Racing. American Magic and Alinghi Red Bull Racing are going to be battling it out. This should advantage Team New Zealand. They'll be thinking about each other, whereas Emirates Team New Zealand should be able to sail clear and fast, and hopefully sailing into good breeze. Look at this. How close? How close? Yeah. Both boats doing there around about 85 kilometres an hour, 40 knots of boat speed. Just think what that's like in your car. Oh, and Emirates Team New Zealand. Nearly a massive stack there in that jibe. How that autopilot actually saved that was super impressive. They were extremely lucky to get away with that jibe. Really, really a loss of meterage there for them. I'll go, I'll go down up to the Peter, just quickly, how big was that stack by Emirates? Big, big save by Emirates Team New Zealand, uh, but the three teams at the front are now having, you know, to be really careful with manoeuvres and control. Thanks, Pete. It is all on going to the bottom mark. Whoa! How about that? Take your pick. American Magic, Emirates Team New Zealand, Alingi Red Bull Racing. It's all on. Race six here on the Red Sea in Jenna. Seems to be right down to the bottom yep. of the final one. Big comeback. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli, followed by Enios Britannia. Yep, there's definitely some door handles being scraped here at the moment in this racing. Absolutely sensational as they all get round the marks. These guys doing a brilliant job of racing at full speed, just inches away from each other. Super, super cool to watch. This is what you'd see in NASCAR racing. No holds barred. Door handle to door handle, baby. Jumped. Look at this. Yeah, we'll Watch it. Enjoy it. Soak it up. Magic continue. Magic cross, both. Yeah, just a replay here of the yeah. bottom mark. Oh, oh, boats going everywhere at pace. Yeah, we'll Alinghi on board here. Get the view from what they'll be thinking here. Having to adjust the sails, steer the boat, watch their opponents, set the boat up for the upwind. Make sure they don't spin out. Turn the boat accurately. Super, super great action there. Emirates Team New Zealand have thought about that boat rounding, haven't they, way before it happened. That's what you need to do. It's all about preparation and communications as we're coming up to a really close cross here. Emirates Team New Zealand probably going to face tack as they do. Yep, so advantage Emirates Team New Zealand. American Magic will have to get out of there as they will be affected with dirty air, tacking away to clear their air. Still in great shape. They'll be looking to sail the boat smoothly across to the left-hand side of the course. Is this not the quickest game of chess on water you've ever seen? <laughs> so as it stands, heading up for the final time to the top mark, Emirates Team New Zealand lead from American Magic, Alinghi Red Bull Racing, Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli picked up a win today. They've got two in the regatta so far, Ineos Britannia and Orient Express Racing. That's how the fleet stands at the moment. Magic continue and Lingy still going. Magic going now. Our race is still magic. How far is it going? Eh? Yeah, I don't think it's worth the tack right yeah. now. Comfortably crossing on the gun. No, we can't two tack to that. 
Nathan Outridge okay, there doing, doing our job yeah, for us. Team New Zealand, similar distance, so like a, maybe even a little, little gain to us, and they are under the lay line, so uh, they're doing a small distance. Hey, don't look my wheel. They can't hit us. Uh, Trending left, it feels like. Because, yeah. Nathan Outridge just looking up the course, even though they're just about to cross another boat. Talking about the shift that they're about to sail into. All important, make sure you're sailing good angles and good speed. So it's not only just a boat on boat race, it's about managing the course and managing the wind and what you're seeing further up the course. Tell me, does Nathan Outridge not have the best poker voice in the world? You would really does he gives away nothing. That's that's Nathan wound up and that's Nathan chilled. The same all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the magnificent pictures coming off the water here on the Red Sea and Jetta. Race six of eight fleet races. Two more to come tomorrow for the winner takes all. Top two point scorers make that final match race here off the coast of Jetta. At the moment, as we head to the top mark for the last time, it's Emirates Team New Zealand with a slight lead. Let's just call it slight on American Magic. Emirates Team New Zealand tagging again on top of American Magic, forcing them away, but they will round the top mark for the last time and head home. How tight will this race be as we go down on that final leg on race number six? It up's good. Right left face. I suppose you're starting. Okay. Two, one, two, one, two, rounding the mark, sitting in position five. They head home for race number six. And I see on your screen, Orient Express racing, last around the top mark. Sorry, Stephen, really nice manoeuvres around the top by all boats there. Definitely a heated race on down to the bottom. All boats pushing hard, just at one or two knots slower now with this extra sea state. We're not seeing the 40 knots of boat speed anymore. 38, 39, just as the seaway increases, the drag increases as the foils have to punch through more water and more sea state on the way down. A bit like driving over some moguls in your car or if you're skiing. You can't ski quite as quick through the moguls as you can on the flat. You can see the boats there working hard to stay foiling. That ultrasonic ride height sensor in that IMU unit working overtime to keep the boats foiling accurately. A quick word about the tumors. It's a big day for them, isn't it? It's a big day. You wouldn't want to be that traveller car. All the ball bearings in that moving back and forth. They will have smoke coming off them by the time they get down to the bottom end of the course here. Trimmers working really hard to keep the heel of the boat very, very accurately flat. That's better there, right? Yeah, under a point, up a little. It's 15 to lay pistol. Keep an eye on it for us. Point left. New Zealand making it look easy at the bottom half of this run, but behind them, it Hang is on the number on. just past. Past. Yeah, going to be a real battle coming down to the finish line here. Still got to pull off a couple of manoeuvres to go. Each team at least one as they come down to the bottom end of the course here. Really nice heel control there. Emirates Team New Zealand jibing now. Nine. Oh, and a bit of a wobble. Just got it there. You can see the puff of disturbed water. Doesn't mean anything a moment for Emirates Team New Zealand. They will come home and pick up another 10 points and put themselves in that match race final. Just like that, another race win for Emirates Team New Zealand. Big points for American Magic followed in. Oh, photo finish maybe. Luna Rossa Prada Varelli. Oh, from that angle, not 100% sure who got it. <laughs> and Alinghi Red Bull first. racing well. The computer's saying it will be Alinghi Red Bull racing. Where did Luna Rossa come out? Oh, that was a fantastic finish. <laughs> and a big shutdown handbrake turn there from Luna Rossa Prado Pirelli. Almost a, a grande imponata as they came through the finish line there. Fantastic racing. It really doesn't get much better than that, surely. What a performance from the Kiwis today, but they haven't had it all the wrong way. They have had to fight for every metre of that racetrack. Oh, look, it's been, uh, it's been absolutely brilliant as we're watching Orient Express Racing coming across the line there, coming in in sixth place. 
plenty to uh, work on for the French team, but um, you know, doing a great job mixing it up, you know, getting off the start line nice and cleanly, and um, you know, they'll be definitely taking away some great lessons, you know, from watching the other boats sail. So lots, lots to work on. Let's jump on to Emirates Team New Zealand. Another cracking race, Pete. Happy to see you. Yeah, no, it was awesome uh, actually. Um, very tight. <laughs> I think we made our life a little bit hard down that last run with a couple of jumps and some jobs and bits and pieces. But um, yeah, we're all learning, getting better, and uh, awesome to get a couple of wins in a second on the board today and you know, give us a bit of confidence going into tomorrow. You look like you're having a, a lot of fun. You know, how good is this and how good is it that the fleet are so tight? Oh, it's awesome. Um, you know, as a sailing team, you want a nice tight racing, really challenge the skills. And, yeah, that's exactly what we've got here. Um, had an awesome race with Prada in the first two, and then an awesome race with the Americans, Valenghi, in that last one. So, yeah, it's definitely uh, been super tight. It's just enough going on with the course, so you get some big gains and losses with getting the phase right. But, um, yeah, we're just super happy to get a couple of wins on the board and uh, get the boat back to the shed in one piece. Well played, Pete. That's, that's, that, that wins enough to get you into the match race uh, on tomorrow as well. So. Uh, Look forward to that one. Now, let's have a look at the, how this race unfolded, shall we? Because, again, it was another scintillating race here on the Red Sea. Start was pretty clean, too. Yeah, look, a really even start there by all boats getting off the line. Unfortunately for Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli, just a, a penalty there, which cost them dearly for, the, for that race, which was a real, real shame. Super tight at this top mark. Three boats going around almost simultaneously. It was all on from here. And just the fleet, the top three boats splitting the apples coming down through there. Some really tight turns and it was absolutely all on as they got to the bottom end of the course. Some really fantastic sailing there by all teams. And then they home in on the finish. Maybe a little bit of a wobble for Emirates Team New Zealand, but they make it three wins. Now, that's, yeah, that's three wins. How about that? And they, look at the numbers, will be the first team into that final. Here is the key moment. This is the final gate, the final turning. And America picks the left-hand mark, the Kiwis the right-hand mark. Beautiful, beautiful manoeuvring there, and it was all on from there. It has been a day where the racing has come to the fore. It has been showtime on the Red Sea. And the AC40s as a boat have shown us why, as Glenn said earlier in the commentary, are the world boat of the year because they've been throwing about and answered with a yee-haw. So confirmation of the standings after race six, and that is enough, 49 points to get Emirates Team New Zealand into the big show tomorrow. They'll be the first team into the match race. So who will be the one to beat them or get in there, should I say? Luna Rossa? I think you Red Bull Racing? Enios Britannia? New York American Magic and Orange Best Racing uh, will be spectators. It's as simple as that. Look at the race summary, look at the numbers and see why Emirates Team New Zealand picked up another win. Yeah, Emirates Team New Zealand there, you know, just sailing a little bit less distance. Really nice average speed there and one less manoeuvre. So absolutely nothing in the top three boats there. They all cross the line within just a few seconds of each other. Absolutely even, Stevens. Stephen. <laughs> You've been working on that one, haven't you? Hey, this is tomorrow's schedule. Two more fleet races, local time, 1.40 and 2.22. And then the match race final. The two teams with the highest scores go into the winner takes all going to be an absolute cracker that is a magnificent the floating uh, mosque here at the the mouth of the jetty yacht club and room just quickly onto the water peter how about that for a day of racing can't beat it right oh that was fabulous best we've had i think in the ac 40s and you know the venues played the game and the yeah brilliant the margins those small little margins and then you had the element of uh, wind shifts and pressure and uh, Peter Burling talk, talked about, hey, we've got a wee bit out of phase at time, but gee, their, their ability to recover. One of the standouts for me, obviously, along with Luna Rossa, brilliant, would be Alingi Red Bull Racing. They had a great day. Thanks, Pete. Shirley, Glenn, cracking day racing, huh? Loved it. Cannot wait for tomorrow. <laughs>
Yep, definitely uh, learning a lot watching from here. Totally different than being on the water, but I'll tell you what, the commentary booth is uh, absolutely not too bad at all. If you are buzzing like people around this uh, Jetta Yacht Club and Marina and also in our commentary team and the rest of our crew bringing you these magnificent pictures, you've been treated to a special day on the Red Sea. It's going to be even better tomorrow, so join us for finals day.